This webinar was part of the International Association for the Study of the Commons World Commons Week. Are you interested in engaging with other common scholars and practitioners around the world? Become an IASC member. Thank you very much, Asley, and thank you very much for those who, who are attending this this talk, this this webinar. Well, I have been part of the of the IASC of the and um, of the Commons. Uh, a study group since since long time ago now since uh, 1999 when I was a, a visitor at the workshop for political uh, theory and policy analysis as many of, of us and I hosted I organized the conference the the conference of the International Association in those days it was called for the study of common property in 2004 in Oaxaca, Mexico, it was the first time that a conference of the of the Association for the Study of Common Property that became later the Association for the Commons was held in, in Latin America. We are having now a second conference in Latin America after, after 14 years in Lima, Peru, and we are very excited about it. So um, I was part of the IC Executive Committee from 2004 to 2013, if I if I remember, 2014, I don't remember well. And I was president of the association from 2011 to 2013. So I've been engaged in different ways and I have learned a lot and benefited a lot. And uh, the Commons and the ISC have been a, an academic house for me and an important uh, conceptual perspective and professional field of work. So let me let me start. I mean, this is uh, only a brief uh, reflection on, on Latin America and the importance of Latin America Commons for the region, for the countries of Latin America, and for the world. Um, I'm not talking so much about Mexico and then Latin America, but I'm trying to reflect in Latin America as a whole, and I will talk. Uh, particularly later on in some about some particular countries which are uh, rich in terms of biodiversity or in terms of uh, collective property rights. So I'm talking about commons, meaning, uh, meaning by commons, common pool resources. We know what common pool resources are, those resources uh, which, uh, which are highly excludable and for whom exclusion is difficult or costly. I'm also understanding commons and shared as shared resources whose sustainable use demand collective action and commons as common property. And very often in global terms and in, in the case of Latin America, these three meanings, these three dimensions of the commons, common pool resources, commons and common property are interrelated. So, um, I would like to add to the concept of commons very closely the concept of communities as those collective entities who use, protect, create, and nurture the commons. Um, so these three meanings of commons will be, I will use in the reflection of commons in Latin America. Latin America, it's uh, in terms of land mass of the, of the global land mass, mass it's uh, relatively small. I mean, uh, Latin America has only 14% of the global land mass and only uh, 85 of the global population. So we are not that many. But commons in Latin America and Latin America uh, wilderness and lands and forests are important because of the ecologic uh, services, the ecologic benefits they, they provide. So commons in Latin America and Latin America Latin American commons have key local, regional, and global significance and importance. In terms of natural commons, what is very relevant in Latin America, it's a uh, well, diverse uh, ecological service, but particularly biodiversity. Biodiversity thought of, uh, as a global common, it's very relevant in, in Latin America and has a global uh, relevance. The region, Latin America, includes six out of the 17 most diverse, the mega diverse countries in the world. These are Brazil, Ecuador, Colombia, and Venezuela. Countries that host, I mean, in the case of Mexico, 
caused as much diversity of plants as Europe to put together. The region has 18% of the global identified, these are different measures of biodiversity, 18% of the globally identified key biodiversity areas, and 20% of the globally identified terrestrial biodiversity conservation hotspots, also three of the six longest coral reefs of the world. These in only, as I said, 14% of the, of the land mass of the world. Also, in, the Gulf, in, in terms of, of sea uh, biodiversity, the Gulf of California and Western Caribbean are included in the top 18 key marine biodiversity conservation hotspots. Forests, uh, particular type of forests in South America, such as the Paramo in Colombia and the Amazonian Basin forests, respectively, are the richest tropical alpine areas and tropical wet forests in the world, with, with 19, sorry, 29% of the world's sea plants, 35% of the mammals, 35% of the reptiles, 41% of the birds and 51% of the amphibians, in addition to over one third of the world's freshwater fish fauna, consisting of over 5,000 species. So the, the richness of the, of the subcontinent of the region, it's, it's very amazing and very important. I consider that biodiversity is a global common, fundamental to maintain key ecological services, or natural contribution to people, as it's put by the IPBS International Panel on Biodiversity and Ecosystem now. These services, uh, important in global terms, are pollination and resilience against pests, global climate change, and environmental change, of particular importance in those days of, of the Anthropocene, as some people call it. Latin America is also very rich in terms of water resources. 31% of the world's fresh water resources are held in the region. The Andes hold 19% of the world's tropical brasiers, producing 10% of the planet's fresh water. So uh, Latin America is a region with more water than any other region uh, in the world in average terms. Latin American biodiversity and water is largely hosted in the most extensive and ecologic, ecologically important wilderness area on the planet, the Amazon Basin, containing a large share of the water resources of the region and playing another critical role in their regulation uh, as regulator of the global climate change. That relates us to the global commons, the global ecological commons uh, as well. Latin America has 20% of the world's forested area. It's today the region with more forest, more share of forest in the world. Together with the global uh, importance of Latin American commons, the global uh, ecological key services they provide, uh, these, these wilderness and seas provide important environmental services in terms of biodiversity, climate, uh, regulation and water in regionally and local terms, local terms. So uh, natural commons in Latin, in, in Latin America, that's my point, uh, have key importance in global, regional and local terms, which are nested uh, in various ways. This comes together with a high culturally and so socioeconomically di uh, diverse, socioeconomical diversity. Latin America is home of 1,064 languages, 15% of the languages spoken in the world today, which refer to a still strong presence of indigenous groups and local communities. 66, 66 million indigenous people live in Latin America, whose cultures have persisted almost all over the region and exception, have exceptionally large proportion of descendants of immigrants, mainly from Europe, Asia, and Africa. Diversity of indigenous people and local communities in, the, in Latin America provides a plethora of knowledge and worldviews 
for managing biodiversity and nature's contribution to people in a manner consistent with cultural values promoting the respectful interaction of people with nature. Resulting from both biological and cultural diversity, there's, agro, there's a rich agrobiodiversity in Latin America. About 30% of the plants consumed today by humans were domesticated and diversified in Latin America, where two of the great eight centers of origin of agriculture are located. Where plants such as maize, common bean, lima bean, tepary bean, jack bean, grain, amaranth, malabar gold, winter pumpkin, chayote, oblong cotton, and again, sweet potato, arrowroot, pe paper, uh, pepper, papaya, guava, cashew, black cherry, cochinilla, cherry tomato, cacao, starchy maize, lima bean, canna, potato, avocado, pepino, tomato, brown cherry, pumpkin, patient flower, uh, quinoa, tobacco, chirimoya, cocoa, and avocado originated. So Latin America agrobiodiversity represents another key global common, germoplasts in centers of origin, fundamental for resilience of the plants we consume today. There is increasing evidence that before European conquest and colonization, different landscapes, such as the highlands of Mexico and South America, but also the important tropical moist forests of Central America and South America, supported important populations and managed landscapes based on agroforestry system. The idea of wilderness empty of people in, in the Americas and particularly in Latin Americas, it's very against the historical evidence. Water, forests, orchards, rivers, even croplands were mostly managed by communities as commons governed with based on complex systems of collective property rights. European conquest and colonization implied the disappearance of about 90% of the indigenous population of the region during the 16th and 17th centuries, who died victims of wars, pests, and famines, as well as losses of knowledge and governance systems. Colonization also meant the imposition of private property over extensed areas favoring colonial masters and losses of lands of communities and communities' livelihoods. The Spanish crown respected collective lands of some groups in Mexico and Central, uh, Central and South America, particularly in the mountains. But these lands were mostly privatized during the 19th century in favor of national elites, post-independent elites, generating increasingly, uh, producing increasingly for world's markets, in plantations of cotton, sugar cane, and coffee. In those days, community resisted claim land. Uh, land claim was the main driver of social movements and social unrest during the 19th and 20th century. Conservative national elites largely kept former indigenous land and strongly repressed peasant movements in countries such as Guatemala, Colombia, and Chile. Reminiscence of colonization in contemporary Latin American societies are a deep social inequality that has increased during the last decades and authoritarian governance that has never left the region. These features tend to erode common resources and communities. As a result of social movements, uh, of the 19th and 20th century and the wave of progressist governments at the beginning of the 21st century, land was restored to indigenous and local communities in different countries, like Nicaragua, Colombia, Bolivia, and Brazil. Many of these lands, now formal community lands, are forest lands. In Mexico, restoration of lands to communities took place since the 1930s. Up to today, about 23% of the lands of Latin America are used or owned by indigenous and local communities. 23%, nearly 25%. The rest is public property, often used collectively. 
in contrast with 18% with the 18% of the lands uh, held by communities in global terms. Countries with the largest share of community property are Mexico, where 52% of the lands are owned by communities, Bolivia, which for this share is 36, Brazil, where the share is 23, Colombia, 34, Peru, 35. This makes Latin America today the region of the world with the largest share of land and natural resources under community property and community control. Historically and currently, major indigenous and local knowledge systems in Latin America have shown their capacity to protect and manage the territories under their particular set of values, technologies, and practices, even in a globalized world. Small scale fisheries and in different types of commons, such as small scale fisheries, uh, family and community agriculture, livestock, husbandry, and agroforestry all based on common pool resources and commons management practiced by indigenous peoples and local communities reflect diversification of sustainable use of nature and play major roles for food security and health at the local level. They also provide environmental benefits beyond local scales. Agricultural production builds on a foundation of the biodiverse American tropics and mountain regions, which as stated before, are centers of origin of many domesticated plants. This makes me, well, me and, and many other people propose that community land, water, and resource management in Latin America are key, are critical for the conservation of, of commons of local, regional, and global importance. In other way, they are fundamental for the future of our societies and the future of the earth as such. Although there is a high biocapacity, as I stated before, biocapacity uh, understood in terms of, of uh, nature benefits to people in terms of uh, environmental services and also uh, food, energy, and so on. Uh, the biocapacity of Latin America is highest than in any other region. That means that nature has an exceptional ability to contribute to people's quality of life. There's a disproportionate and unsustainable use of this biocapacity that has increased steadily in recent decades at the expense of water bodies, forest areas, and biodiversity. What I mean is that since colonial times, Latin America has been a net exporter of food and minerals. And this tendency has strongly increased since the 1990. Today, the region is the largest exporter of food and minerals, and also a large exporter of bioenergy to developed countries and emerging economies, mainly to China. This has meant destruction of common lands and natural resources implemented through land grabbing particularly in the Amazon basin and the national control of the subsoil. Latin America today, since the 2000s, has become the region with more uh, mining activ activity, which is more than 90% devoted to, to exports. This is taking place some years after the devolution of rights to community lands that I have referred uh, to, this has taken place as the prices of commodity rise rose in the 90s and to 2000. And the governments in Latin America claim, and this is, uh, this is a reminiscence of the colonial uh, times, the property of the subsoil. That means that even if the lands are owned by community, the subsoil is officially uh, national property. This is hotly debate in the region uh, today. So governments have begun rolling back the legal recognition of indigenous peoples and local communities' land rights as part of the efforts to scale up commercial exploitation of natural resources, eroding the environment, communities, as well as livelihoods. For different countries, such as Bolivia, Peru, and Colombia, fiscal contributions of mining corporations 
are the main sources of revenue of national governments. So the region in the last decades is showing the uh, decrease in water security, environmental human health, sustainable livelihoods, cultural identity and identity, and access and benefits sharing of, na of nature. Tendencies that are linked to drivers such as patterns of economic growth, population and demographic tre trends, weakness in the governance systems and inequity. And by the way, Latin America is the most unequal region in the world. So among the main traits of cultural and natural commons in Latin America, we find a sustainable intensification of agricultural production that has led to habitat conversion, climate change, also climate change that affect unproportionately small farmers, rural abandon and urbanization, unplanned urbanization. Vis-a-vis -vis this complex uh, panorama, a uh, proposal that's gaining uh, political importance for conservation, it's the rights-based approach. Uh, sustaining policies such as indigenous people and local communities reserve and manage landscape matrix, which incorporates biological corridors held as commons and governed by local communities and federations of local communities. In Latin America and elsewhere, trends in livelihoods and good quality of life depend not only on material nature's contribution to people with high economic value, but also on non-material contributions like learning experiences and supporting identities. And regulating contributions such as regulation of extreme events, disease, and pollination that are often not accounted for in economic or development planning and are provided by commons and communities. Because of their natural and cultural richness, preservation and development of the commons and communities in, Latin, in the Latin American region is fundamental to reinforce and develop a natural and social resilience in the context of uncertainty and drastic change of the Anthropocene we are living through. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's, That's it. great. So now I'll ask the, the audience if they have any questions. Uh, now is the time to ask them. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, so, yes. Yeah, so uh, just a few minutes and I'll see if the audience has any questions. You can ask a question by typing in the Q&A box. Okay. <coughs> So I got one question for you, and it's, why is Latin America so biodiverse? Oh, <laughs> we have to ask God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there are, there are geological reasons. Um, also, geological reason, re, re, uh, reasons meaning uh, the North, North America and, and South America are were part of, of two different Asian continents, Pangea and Gingea. So you, we find in Latin America, in North, North America and Central America, species that are, were originated in Pangea and in South America, species that were originated in, in Gingea. I mean, that's million, million, million years ago, I mean, before the current, co the, the actual uh, continents were for. And, in Mexico and Central America are corridors of migration of species of North America and South America of different, um, of different uh, old evolutionary um, origins. So you have that, and you also have in, in Lat the, uh, the fact that Latin America is very fragmented because of the mountainous uh, landscape. So um, the different lands because of the mountains tend to be very isolated and this favors endemism very much. Um, so I think in general terms, this is, this is one of, of the reasons. La, uh, in terms of agrobiodiversity, um, there, there's, there are more domesticated plants in, in Latin America than animals. I mean, husbandry was almost not practiced in Latin America, only a, a few in the Andes by the, by the Incas, but uh, in Mesoamerica and the rest of South America, the Amazon, we do not find 
uh, like pastoral uh, societies or civilizations that we that, that we find in in Asia or in Asia or or Europe. Um, so I think this is it, and also it's also related with a uh, with a uh, low population density and the fact that uh, for the extends wilderness like the Amazon or the Chaco or the the Mayan forest were preserved. So we are heirs of that story. Awesome. I guess I have a question and yeah. it's, it has to do with just the economy within each of each every whatever country in Latin America and yeah. their dependence on natural resource extraction. Yes. Do you see a world where biodiversity is is preserved and supported while trying to maintain economic development? No, I think this is this is not the case. I mean, even if this if this uh, global importance of biodiversity of Latin America is widely recognized, and there, there are other important biodiverse hotspots. I mean, like like in Asia and, uh, and uh, well, like Indonesia or the Philippines, but the population density is much higher there. So well, that doesn't mean that in Latin America it's low, but it's 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 much lower. I mean, even if this is recognition of the need for the for the future of our societies to to maintain biodiversity, biodiversity, the the money invested. I mean, the the competition with biodiversity and conservation, with industrial agriculture and extractive economies, it's it's very strong. And in the last twenty years, this has taken place. In, uh, in an incredible rate. I mean, you, you find that, or you find that uh, an area like uh, the Amazon in, in Brazil or, or Ecuador are being deforested to, to drill oil, or uh, they are changed to plantation of soil, that, that soy that's uh, exported to China. And this is largely due to the lack of recognition of the rights of local communities and indigenous communities, which have more sustainable livelihoods. So it's political and economical, but I think the battle for local communities, the struggle for local communities has a global meaning and has a regional meaning as Americans, I mean, as Americans for the Americas. Yeah, very, very interesting. Thank you. Very no, thank you. No, what's amazing is to, to realize that how much the, the chances of preservation of these global commons, biodiversity, and the Amazon as regulator of the global climate change are very deeply linked with the survival, with the protection of indigenous communities, local communities, not only indigenous and local co collective rights. So it's beyond the local meaning. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's very interesting. There was a talk last night about just indigenous knowledge in, uh -huh. in uh, I think it was in the Philippines, and then just governments not really listening to the indigenous yeah. knowledge, but most yeah. like more about sustainable living. Yeah, and I think this is also based in the fact that our societies are very unequal, and those indigenous and local people, and even middle classes, have very low political voice. I mean, I, I meant that due to colonial uh, colonial uh, and well, the colonial impact after 500 years after our societies are still very authoritarian and our societies are deeply unequal. I mean, it's Mexico, it's one of the 10th most unequal countries in the world. So unfortunate. No, and they, it has it has ecological, I mean, environmental, social, political, cultural implications. And I think the commons are, are key in these struggles for the future, for a sustainable future. Definitely, I agree with that. So I will, if anyone else has any questions, feel free to ask them in the next couple minutes. No, okay, we got one more. Uh, how does common scholarship relate to resistance? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. That's a great question. I think, well, I, I meant to, to say that, that the common scholarship in Latin America, in spite of the 
efforts of various colleagues have it's not very well developed i think very much related to the to the language barrier but uh but also because in the region people feel that the the commons i mean academic local academics i mean latin american academics tend to feel that the commons perspective it's very academic very foreign and not enough uh involved with uh, advocacy in favor of community struggles and i think this is true and um, this is largely true but not only for the commons scholarship but for scholarship at a large extent okay so if no one has any more pressing questions we might wrap it up i'll say my uh, last remarks but and i'll leave the question and answer section open but i'd just like to say on behalf of the IASC and the World Commons Week, we'd like to thank you so much for coming, well, presenting for us. I know you had a long travel and you're coming down with the cold, so we really appreciate you. Oh, thank you. I mean, my pleasure. My pleasure. And hope to see you in Lima. Oh my gosh, yes, please. Yeah, and I'd like to mention to all the, to the listeners that in November, they're holding their first virtual conference, the IASC, and then also in July, in of 2019 in Lima, Peru will be their biennial in-person conference. The deadline for paper abstracts is due November 15, 2018. And so we'd like to thank you for attending and for you for your presentation. Okay, thank you. Bye -bye. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.